9 a.m. What's up, guys? Woo! Listen, if you were not awake when you walk in here, you are awake now after that worship set. My goodness. Uh, I'm so thankful to have Reagan here. Reagan is our um, office administrator at our main campus. And Reagan can sing. Okay. I've been to karaoke night with Reagan before. And I've seen her get on the stage, and I've been like, the rest of the people in this place, you all better just leave now, because you're about to bring this house down, okay? Because she can sing, and our band, I'm so thankful for them. And um, I'm also like, psyched to be here. Look at you all. You all look good. You made it through another week. You got to church. That's half the battle, just looking good, getting to church right there. And I'm so glad you're here, and um, maybe you've just started to come the last two weeks, uh, and you're looking at me, you're like... Well, who's this guy? He's not Pastor Carter. If you were here last weekend, you know why I called Carter, Cotter, Carter. Um, and maybe you're like, he's not going to be as funny as Pastor Nate, um, and I'm, I'm not, okay? But my name is Joel. I'm one of the pastors on our team, and uh, I listen to both those guys' messages. Incredible. Oh, my goodness. Aren't you thankful for the team that we have around here, like Nate and Cotter? I'm so grateful for those guys. Uh, and my name is Joel, by the way, and um, if you are here for the first time after the service, I'd like to meet you. If you're here for the second or third time, like you're here those other weeks where those other guys were speaking and we haven't gotten to meet, I'll be on the lobby afterwards. Please stop by and say hello. Also, a big hello to our online family. Let's make some noise for online family. Thank you guys for tuning in. Online is how I tuned in the last two weeks, and um, l- let me explain where I was the last two weeks, um, but to do that... I need, I need us all to go back to Christmas. Some of you are like, I don't, I don't got to go back. I, I paid a Christmas credit card bill this past Tuesday. Um, <laughs> listen, I get it. Santa's not a cheap date. Um, but for Christmas, um, my, my, Stacy's mom and um, stepdad, their Christmas gift to our family was a family vacation with them in sunny Florida all expenses paid. Come on, somebody. Did I mention I hit the, the in-law lottery? Some of you are like, can we swap in-laws? No, I'm keeping mine, all right? And I love you, Ted and Teresa. And we, we had the best trip going to Florida. They planned out for us to go to SeaWorld and Universal. Um, they, they rented, a, we all got this house in Margaritaville with a heated pool. Did you all just feel the Lord move? Because I just felt the Lord move. (laughs) Florida was amazing. But can I I first world problem complain to you all for just a second? Is that okay? Some of you are like, no, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, And and Florida was amazing. But getting to Florida, have you ever seen the movie Planes, Trains, and Automobiles? That was like a documentary of our trip to Florida. And so here's what happened. Um, We we flew out of Salisbury. Anybody ever flown out of Salisbury before? Okay, so you know, um, basically, the, the terminal <laughs> is about the size of our men's bathroom over here. So it's a single stall. And, um, and the, pl- the plane, it's not, a, it's not a 737. I'm 99% sure it's a crop duster, okay? I'm pretty <laughs> sure the pilot just got done spraying Farmer Bob's field before he showed up on the tarmac. And so anyway, there's six of us in, you, that went on this trip. So we get on the, the plane. That maxes out the crop duster. I'm sitting by um, the window, and I'm looking out the window before we take off, and I, I see um, all these mechanics <laughs> looking at the wing. And then they're whispering to each other, and then they came and like whispered something to our stewardess. And then she looked stressed and whispered something to the pilots. And then they did this whole thing again and again. And this went on for minutes. Probably eight, maybe nine. I don't know. It went on forever, it felt like. Finally, we hear, this is Captain Crop Duster. (laughs) We seem to be having a mechanical problem. I think I may have a corn stalk in the field at Farmer Bob's, so... We're going to need to get you all off this plane so we can take the corn stalk out the wing. And so we get off the plane while they're, I think, destalking the the wing from the crop duster. Finally, we get back on the plane. It's an 18-minute flight to Philly. So we get to Philly. We have 18 minutes, I think, to get to our gate. And so we are running through 
Philadelphia airport, all right? And I actually videotaped this if you want to see that. Okay, this is, this is us running through the airport in Philadelphia. <laughs> this is my mother-in-law. This is my boy Nixon right here. We are just running through. And, and Nixon literally starts singing Run Run Rudolph from the Home Alone movie while we're running through the airport. I've never had a more proud moment of my son, okay? We hear over the intercom, this is the final boarding call for Air, American Airlines flight to Orlando. And so my father-in-law was like, run, Joel, run. <laughs> and I do whatever my father-in-law says because he was paying for the trip, okay? So I ran, I think I pushed over seven elderly women, okay? I, a small child got kicked, all right? I did, but I got to the gate, I looked out the window and the plane was still there. And I'm like, we made it! <laughs> And the person at the desk said, um, we, we, we may have given away your seats because we didn't think you're going to make it. I'm like, I am a runner, lady. And she's like, well, we also gave away all the seats on the plane. And you're, so you're going to have to get on the next plane to Orlando, which is in like six hours. And I, listen, I'm a, I'm a Jesus follower. I'm, I'm a man of the cloth. I'm literally a professional Christian, okay? And so I filmed how I reacted so you would know how to react in good, you know, bad situations. And so here's how I reacted. This is me <laughs> full on Steve Martining it at the airport. Six hours until the next flight. This is not a lie. When the next flight came, they delayed it like 987 times because they didn't have a pilot to fly the plane. How are you going to schedule a plane to fly without the pilot? And so it was just like bad news after bad news. I didn't even mention that. When we get to Florida that night, it's raining. The second day of the trip, the, the hot water heater in the pool broke. Our car broke, our rental car broke down at SeaWorld. Okay, and I know some of you are like, you just sound like you're complaining. These are first world problems. Listen, I live in the first world, so these are my problems, people. And our trip was amazing, all right? But on the way there, my in-laws, me and Stacy, my kids, we're, both, we're all like, this is bad news, all bad news. Everybody say, bad news. bad news. Now, do you know what I've noticed? We live in a bad news world. Don't we live in a bad news world? Everywhere you look, it's bad news, all right? The, the news, bad news, politics. Really bad news. <laughs> Interest rates, bad news. Um, house affordability, bad news. Artificial intelligence. Listen, did we not learn anything from the Terminator movies, people? <laughs> bad news, okay. The Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl again. Bad news. But here's some breaking news about bad news. We kind of love bad news. But we're kind of like drawn to bad news. Have you ever heard the phrase, if it bleeds, it leads? You ever heard this before? Do you know what that means? It means that there's a bad headline. We love it. We're, we're all kind of like mosquitoes on a hot summer night when we see that blue light on the porch. And we know we shouldn't go to it, but we're like, I can't help myself. <laughs> Did you know 90% of headlines are negative? And you know why? Because you're six times more likely to click a negative headline than a positive headline. And so we're all kind of, maybe it's not the media's fault. Maybe we're all a bunch of mosquitoes like, Z-Z-Z-Z-Z. and so we, we hate bad news, but we kind of love it. We kind of feed on bad news. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but I, I can notice that we can go down like a, a bad news spiral. You know what I mean? Like, we can all become this guy. I'll, I'll show you a picture um, of the, the guy. We, we can become this guy, Eeyore. Who remembers some Eeyore? And, you know, we can be Eeyores. We can be like, well, it's Monday again. My right knee, it ain't working again. I got a stanky leg walk to my hoopty car to go to the job. And I don't like it. It doesn't pay me enough again. My boss smells like cheese again. <laughs> Speaking of cheese, have you seen the price of cheese? It's the government's fault. I read on Facebook that the president himself 
sets the price of cheese. <laughs> and my marriage is bad news. My, kid, my kids licked the handrail all the way down the steps this morning. So they're not getting a scholarship. <laughs> bad news. Come on, we can... Have you ever met some Eeyores or been an Eeyore before? Anybody at all? Yes. And here's the bad news about being an Eeyore. Bad news people repel people. But Jesus was and is a good news person. Which, by the way, if you're a Jesus follower, we should all be professionals at good news. We should all have good news PhDs, people, because the, the gospel of Jesus literally, actually, 100% means, the gospel actually 100% means good news. Turn to the person next to you and say, hey, stop being Eeyore. I got good news. <laughs> Jesus was and is a good news person. And even more than, we, that, than bad news people push people away, the good news of Jesus, Jesus drew people in. When people met Jesus, they were like, uh, what's, what's, what's up with this guy? Why is he such a hope dealer? And people were like, they didn't know. They were just drawn to Jesus. And, and if your life is full of bad news right now, I just want you to know this. Bad news can shake you, but the good news of Jesus can shape you. Bad news can shake you, but the good news of Jesus can shape you. And that'll preach right there. And speaking of preach, I probably should do that since that's what I'm supposed to do around here. So we're going to talk about John chapter 4 today. And uh, John chapter 4 is a famous Jesus story uh, that we know as the, the woman at the well. And here's a setup to the story. It's the middle of the day. It's almost hotter than my smoking hot wife. Because it's the middle of the day, it's smoking hot outside, everybody in the middle of the day would have been thirsty, so Jesus shows up to this well to get a drink of water. Now, we know what this, what, where this well is, it's called Jacob's Well, and I think we'll, we'll put this picture on the screen. This is a fun fact. We know exactly today where Jacob's Well is, it's, it's right here, it's 30 miles north of Jerusalem, and this is one of the only places in the world that you can go today and you can stand in the exact same spot that Jesus stood. I think that's super cool. And so Jesus, in the middle of the hot day, he rocks up to this, this well by himself. And, and here's where we pick up the story in John chapter 4, starting in verse 7. It says, soon, a, a what kind of woman? Samaritan. A Samaritan woman came to draw water. And Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman, what was she? She was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. Now, not so fun fact. Back in Jesus' day, most Jewish people were racist against Samaritans. But then Jesus, who is a Jew, Jewish Jesus, goes and talks to this Samaritan woman. And she's like, are you okay? Like, did you not get the memo? Like, you're not supposed to talk to me, and now you're, like, offering to share a drink with me. Are, are, you, are you okay, Jesus? And I, I tell you this all the time. Jesus liked people who were nothing like him, and people who were nothing like Jesus liked Jesus. And so that's a cool part of this story. So he's talking to this lady. Now, this lady, we're going to find out later in the story, she's been divorced five different times, and she is now shacking up with guy number six. Everybody say, what? Listen, that's crazy by today's standards. That's crazy by Hollywood standards. Six times, dude. And if you're a six or seven timer, all right, I'm, I'm sorry, but like six times, <laughs> And so we shouldn't call the story the, the woman at the well. We should call it the, the thirsty woman at the well. <laughs> Loosen up. We're in church. Anyway, the truth is this woman had been through some bad news. I mean, think about it. She had been through broken dreams. She had been through drama. She had been through broken hearts. She had been through judgment, hello, which is why she's at the well in the middle of the day, the hottest part of the day, because nobody else would have been there to shame her. But Jesus shows up for her, 
when she least suspects it. And I've been praying all week long that for somebody today, Jesus is going to show up in your life and you don't even see it coming. He's just going to show up and he's going to do something that you don't even see coming. And Jesus, when he shows up for her, don't miss this. He doesn't shame her. He offers to share a drink with her, all right, which back in Jesus' day was a sign, a symbol of friendship. Now, I'm going to be honest. I don't even like sharing drinks with my own children. Come on, how many of you, where are my non-drink sharers at in the room? Let me see you. Don't be afraid. Okay, we need to go to Celebrate Recovery on Thursday night because we got some issues to work out. <laughs> Listen, anytime I get a drink of water, my kids, they are like little drink-stealing sinners. Some of you got the same kids, all right? They, like, I, if I put my, get my water and I put it on the counter, my, my daughter, Nora, she becomes like a Rehoboth Beach seagull. She just kind of swoops in and sits there and just looks at it. And you know, parents, every parent knows the moment you look away, what's she going to do? Drink it. And I'm like, I am your father, not your drink sharer. Steal your mother's drink, all right? So I don't like to share drinks. But Jesus, the Jewish Messiah, is willing to share his drink with a five times divorced Samaritan woman, which is why it says she was so surprised. And here's the good news for all of us in that. Jesus was never afraid to cross the line to reach people in surprising ways, which is exactly what he can do for you. It's exactly the type of church we are called to be for the people of Rehoboth Beach. And it's the type of people that we should be for the people in our lives. Aren't you thankful and down to do that? Are you going to do that with our church to cross the line to reach people in surprising ways? Are you down for that church? Because we're going to offend you sometimes when we do it. But it's for them. Jesus crossed that line. So I I got a, a few ideas about good news today. So if you need some in a bad news world, there's two points today. The first thing is this. Keep the good news good. Just keep the good news good. Now, um, let's go back to my trip uh, to Florida. Uh, finally, all right, after they pulled the corn stalk out of the wing, we ended up in Orlando. And uh, one of the days we went to Universal Studios. Now, anybody been to Universal? Listen, I think it may be better than Disney. Don't Mickey Mouse judge me. I said maybe, okay? And I I took a selfie while I loved Universal so much. And so here here it is. This is me in front of Jurassic Park. (laughs) Any Jurassic Park fans in the room? Come on, Miss Patsy. I know you love Jurassic Park. (laughs) I love Universal because the rides are all based on, on movies, movies that I've seen. And so the second ride I saw when we walked in was Fast and Furious, the ride. Now... I'll be honest, when I saw that there was a Fast and Furious ride, I thought, well, I don't really need to ride that because I ride in the car with my wife. I'm going to pay for that one. That one's going to cost me, Jerry. Right there, that's not. <laughs> so now that we're on that road, let's keep on going down that road. Okay, so I see Fast and Furious, the ride, and I'm like, I think the Lord has been preparing me for the last 20 years riding with Stacy to ride this ride. Like, I don't know why they don't call it Stacy's van, the ride. Some of you are awkward laughing. She's in the next service. You can laugh with me, okay? So anyway, we get on this ride. You literally get in a van on the ride. And, and first thing you do, your car in the ride, it pulls up to like um, this nightclub. And Vin Diesel and The Rock show up as a hologram. And I look over at Stacy and she's like, I'm like, cover your eyes, girl, okay? They're not real. Hologram. Anyway, next thing you know, there's an explosion or something, and then our van takes off. We're going down the highway, and like Vin Diesel is protecting our van in like a, he's like in a uh, helicopter shooting things. The, the rock is driving a tank down like Route 1. I mean, it, there, was, there was real fire. I mean, again, this is not unlike a normal trip to Aldi in my wife's car. We finally, you know, I, I, I'm on this ride. I thought my life was in danger at certain points. I look over at my mother-in-law, and she's just like. <laughs> and it, the ride moved the whole time. It was just it was wild. What was weird is after I got off the ride, I felt like I was stuck on that ride for the rest of the day. Like, I felt like I was, I was moving. Like, have you ever gone on a cruise or been on a boat for a long time? Then you get off the boat, and you're like, Ooh. 
Have you ever felt like this? No, I'm not talking about like Dewey Beach on Friday night. I'm talking about a cruise. <laughs> the rest of the day, I felt stuck on this like loop of a ride. And, and I tell you that because I think sometimes we can also get stuck in a bad news loop. We get stuck on this is bad, that person is bad, everything is bad, the ride. Come on, if you've ever been stuck in a bad news loop, uh, like a, you've gone fast and furious down a bad news loop, just shout Vin Diesel or something, something to let me know. And we put bad news on repeat, don't we? In our heads, we're like, oh, the family drama, it's, it's bad news. My, my health, you know, the bad cholesterol, bad news, my money, well, I don't got any, and apparently the credit card company thinks that's bad news. My romance, more like no man. My, my future at college, my dreams, my kids, my kids are actually bad. Okay, like all these things, we can put that stuff on a loop. And if, and if you're stuck in a bad news loop, the good news of Jesus can break your bad news loop. But here's the thing, bad news will find you. Good news, you got to find it. Bad news, it's going to find you. It's like a heat-seeking missile. Bad news, uh, bad news will find you, but good news, you have to look for it. And so maybe you don't know how to do that. So there's a hint at Jacob's well with how we find the good news in our life. Okay, so we're, we're back to, um, you know, Jesus and this woman at the well. And here's what happens. He's talking to her after talking about sharing a drink. And Jesus replied to her, if you only knew what? The gift God has for you. A five times divorce, still shacking up with guy number six right now. God has a gift for you. And who you are speaking to, he says, you would ask me and I will give you what? Living water. In other words, he's like, hey, hey, you know, bad news, a lot of stuff going on in your life. But I want you to know there is no one or no thing that is too far gone for me. And he promises to make your life feel like it's worth living again. And Jesus, here's what I love about the good news of Jesus. The good news of Jesus is always refreshing. It's always reviving. And it's always life-giving. And it is for everyone, which is good news. And, and, and I want to show you the difference between the bad news of the world and the good news of Jesus. And we'll, we'll throw this on the screen. There, there's some, here's some things. The bad news of the world says life and everything in it is random. But the good news of Jesus says God is real and at work in my life. The bad news of the world says life is meaningful or meaningless unless I make it meaningful. Uh. But the good news of Jesus says God loves me and gives me meaning. The bad news of the world says I, I can't get it right. You ever felt like that? But the good news of Jesus says Jesus makes me right with God. The bad news says I am worm food when I die. Hello. But the good news says I get to live forever in paradise. Come on, somebody. And Every single person you know that's gone before you, that you love, that's a Jesus follower, you get paradise time, forever time, and heaven time with them. Come on, high five me somebody. Like, that is good news. You're not worm food. You get paradise forever with heaven. It, th is this kind of good news? Yeah. It's good news. I look at this, and I think, if I'm in a bad news loop, this can help break a bad news loop for me. So you can replace a bad news loop with Jesus' good news. Now, I've been a pastor for 11 years almost, and um, one of the things I've noticed about being a pastor is some church people kind of like to feel bad. You notice this? Like some of you are like, I just want to leave church feeling terrible about myself. <laughs> I've had people in the, in the lobby being like, you know, Joel, that message was cute and all, but hit me with it. Come on, just... Give, give it to me, pastor. I don't want to walk out of here feeling terrible. And I'm like, are you sick? <laughs> I remember years ago, um, I was at Pohanka in Salisbury getting my car worked on. And I got a phone call uh, from this guy who was uh, a part of the church at the time. And when the phone was ringing, I saw who it was. So I went to answer it. And um, he hung up before I answered it. And so I called him back. And it rang one time. And then it went straight to vo voicemail. Who knows what just happened? <laughs> he just declined the pastor, Okay. 
And so I got the decline. I'm like, what in the world is going on? And um, next thing I know, I get an email. While I'm at Blank, I got an email from this guy. And he's like, I ignored your call. I'm like, I knew it. And he's like, uh, I ignored your call because I didn't really know how to tell you this, you know, on the phone. So it's easier for me to email you. And he said, I, I got to leave your church. He's like, you just, you just don't make me feel bad enough about myself. And I'm like, he's like, you're always talking about the grace of God and the good news of Jesus. And it's just too much. He's like, I need to go somewhere that'll just beat me up. I'm like, is there exhaust being pumped into the waiting room? of the pohanka is like, am I, do I have carbon monoxide poisoning right now? (laughs) And I wasn't, I wasn't mad at him. Okay. But if you're looking to go to a church where like the guy on the stage just punches you in the throat every single Sunday, we're probably not your church. And here's why. The good news of Jesus is so good. The good news, the gospel literally means good news. So I will never stop talking about the grace of Jesus around here. I'll never stop talking about the good news of Jesus around here. And, and listen, I think the good news of Jesus is so good that I really shouldn't have to scare the hell out of you to want to follow Jesus. Jesus loves you. He wants to make your life better and make you better at life. And that doesn't mean we won't talk about sin. We will talk about sin. But I'll never talk about sin without highlighting God's amazing grace. It doesn't mean we won't talk about the hard stuff. We'll talk about the hard stuff, but I will never talk about the hard stuff without telling you that Jesus loves you so much that he is willing to walk with you through your hard stuff. The gospel is and always will be the good news. It's good news. And so here's the truth. The bad news of sin is worse than most people think, but the good news of Jesus is better than any of us can imagine. And so we will always highlight that around here. And just like people were attracted to good news, Jesus, do you think people will be attracted to a good news church? I'm going to ask again. <laughs> you get another shot at this, okay? Because we're about grace around here. If people were drawn to good news, Jesus, do you think people will be drawn to a good news church? Yeah. Yes. And so you see some empty seats around you, right? You see some empty seats? You know how we fill those up in our good news church? You be a good news person. Because the people in your life will be like, what's, what's wrong with you? Are you on something? And you can be like, yeah, Jesus. You want to come to my church? Bam, we fill up the basement. Let's keep the good news good in our church and in our lives. And here's the, um, the second idea. is to fill your cup with something better than bad news. Uh, now, l- let me show you what I'm talking about. This is called a visual aid. It's a preacher's trick <laughs> to help bring you back if you're not enough right now, okay? So this is your opportunity to come back in, and um, I have a cup of very refreshing-looking um, Rehoboth Beach basement water, okay? You see the basement water? And <clears throat> let's say that this represents our life. Then I have a a little glass of Joel's Backyard Dirt. You see this? Okay, we're going to say this represents the bad stuff that gets in our life, okay? So, and this happens all the time, okay? So maybe, maybe you, you date the wrong guy. And maybe you have a, a kid with the wrong guy. And now you got baby papa drama with the wrong guy. There's a little bit of a stick in that one I dug out of my backyard. Um, then you got diaper bills, drama. If you got young kids, that's drama. That's, that's dirt right there. And um, you, on top of that, you got, you got family drama. You have um, health drama. You have work drama. You have Philadelphia Eagles drama. <laughs> we'll put two scoops for that. <laughs> Now, I didn't experiment this at home, so hopefully all this works out. Um, but is this mucky, dirty water? Is this disgusting? This is what our life can look like. It can get filled with this bad news stuff, and all we see is this mess. And so sometimes this, this is how we try to fix it. We're like, I'm going to fix it. I'm going to fix my problems on my own, one spoonful at a time. Okay, so I'm going to date better people, and I'm going uh, you know, to buy off-brand diapers because that's cheaper. I'm going to, um, you know, get a therapist to help me work through my problems. I'm going to root for a better team 
like the Ravens. <laughs> that helps. But like, do we still got a mucked up life situation? Yes or no? Yes. And so our one way to fix our problems is one scoop at a time. That didn't work out all that well. And, and Jesus says, look, I want to give you the gift of living water. And so what he promises us is when you pour me into your life, it'll start to filter the bad stuff out of your life. OK, so when you just start reading your Bible every single day and you start talking to me every single day and you start going to my favorite church in the basement every single day and you start tithing every single day and you start loving people every single day. It looks a lot better. Now, it's not perfect. Don't worry about that. OK. Listen, when we pour the good news of Jesus in our life, it can filter out all that bad news stuff that's mucking up our life. And so many times we try to fix it one spoonful at a time. And Jesus is just kind of standing there in the corner like with a pitcher like, you need some help? You want to invite me to your little Eeyore party? Because I'll come with my water. And so what I love about Jesus is he keeps, he continually refreshes us even though life keeps on pouring in bad news. Look at, um, look at this next verse. It says this in verse 13, 13. He says, anyone who drinks this water, talking about the dirty, mucky, dirty mess in our life, will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, what's it say? Bubbling, Bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. I, I told you, paradise, y'all, eternal life. Now, Help me out and say bubbling spring. Bubbling spring. I, I love that phrase, bubbling spring. You could probably just breeze right over it, but a bubbling spring is nonstop, continuous, fresh, new water, right? Isn't that what that is? And so what that means is when we got stuff going on in our life, Jesus, he keeps on pouring in new water. Bad news keeps coming in. We keep pouring in Jesus. He keeps on bringing new stuff to our life. He keeps on refreshing us. And he has, it's never ending refills with Jesus, people. Free. And so you got this story and you have this woman who's been divorced five different times. He uses her. He uses her out of all people to teach all of us that no matter how bad the bad news is, no matter how much you're stuck in a bad news loop right now, Jesus can replace the dirty, bad news water with a continuous, nonstop, refreshing, bubbling spring of good news so your life feels worth living again. Come on, somebody. That's good news, isn't it? That is good news. Now, for that to work, you got to keep filling up your cup every single day. Because here's the thing. You're going to walk out. It's, we're, we're in the church bubble right now. Look at the church bubble. Everything's perfect in here. You're going to walk out of here, and then you're going to have like 23 text messages on your phone. You got 23 steps to walk up, the same steps that your kid licked the rail all the way coming in. And there's going to be bad news because we live in a bad news world. And so you can either fill up on that stuff when you walk out of here, or the church bubble, or you can fill up on the good news of Jesus. Um, it makes me think of, again, our trip from Florida. So um, uh, we were in Philly when we're, when we're in the whole situation where everything's going bad, and I'm like Steve Martining it up there, like losing my mind. Um, and I'm sitting on the tarmac of Philly, and I'm like, okay, Lord, <laughs> thank you, Lord, that we're going to leave, I think. I'm thankful that we actually have a pilot for this flight. This flight. And I, it's just been a, kind of a rough traveling experience. And so I thought, you know, I need to, I need something positive. I, I need to read my Bible. Now, um, when I travel, I don't bring my, my personal Bible because I, I have like a pastor's Bible. It's huge. You know, like you got to take it through customs and you put wheels on it when you're like w rolling it through. It's just ridiculous. And so when I travel, I just use the Kindle app on here to read my life application study Bible. And so on the plane, it's not a lie. I pulled up Kindle to read my Bible and my Kindle app froze and did not work for the rest of the trip. I'm like, Lord, are you punishing me? Like, is this because of my Pittsburgh Steelers jokes? Is that what this is, Lord? I don't know. Yes, no. Some of you are very much in disagreements about that. But, and I read my Bible pretty much every single day, but the entire trip, okay, my Kindle app was possessed by the devil. My real Bible was 
here uh, in, in my living room. And so, um, pastor confession, I didn't read my Bible on vacation. But I did bring uh, one book that I read while I was down there. It's uh, my friend Bill Salmon's book. Anybody know or read Bill Salmon's book? Okay, yeah, got some Bill Salmon's fans in the room. Um, this book is called After the Rooster Crows. It's amazing. It's on Amazon. You literally should go buy this today. It is so good. Also, he mentions me in the book, so hashtag humble brag. So, um, <laughs> no, it is really, really good. I read this book while I was on vacation, and as good as this book was, I missed the book. You know what I mean? And like when I was going through some bad stuff in Philadelphia, I, I could have used a little Psalm 103. I, actually, maybe some of you could use some Psalm 103 right now. I don't know if you've ever read Psalm 103. It's by a guy named David. His life is going sideways and he forces himself to say some incredible stuff. This is what, this is what the beginning of the chapter, David says, let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and he heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death, and he crowns me with love and tender mercies. His, he fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed. Like, that's supposed to say the ravens is the only typo in the Bible. <laughs> we'll let it be. Don't miss this. David is talking to himself here. He's saying, self, praise the Lord. Self, I know things aren't good right now, but you're going to praise the Lord. Come on, self. I know your flight to Florida has been delayed 987 times, and they forgot to schedule a pilot, but you are going to praise the Lord. You are going to praise his holy name. Some of you, that's what you need to do today. You need to go home, and you need to tell yourself some stuff. In the, you need to talk to yourself. Just say, I'm going to talk to myself. Just say it. You just did it. Good. And so you need to say, self, I know things are bad right now, but I've got all these good things you've given me, Jesus. Or, or, or self, listen, I know things are going sideways right now, but you've still forgiven me, Jesus. Self, I, I know that life doesn't feel worth living right now, but Jesus said my life was worth dying for, so my life has got to be worth living for. Come on, self, even when things go bad, even on the other side of this world, I'm going to be forever in paradise because I got... One ticket to paradise. Come on, somebody. I'm not going to sing for you again. All right, that's Reagan's job. But here's what's so good about Psalm 103. We just read five verses. For the next 18 verses, this guy just goes off telling himself all the benefits and good news of following God. Everybody say benefits. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with this. The, the band, you guys can, can come up here because we're going to end with a final song. I try to get you guys some room. So you're not like in my water situation right here. We got to clean that up. Oh, Lord. It's good news. Don't worry about it. Um, thank you, Nate. Yep, I brought this. I don't think it's going to help. Let me finish up the service. We got people who can take care of that. Uh, the band, you guys can come forward. Don't worry about this. It's a little hiccup. Let's get back into it. <laughs> Nate, you're a brave man. Pray for Nate right now. <laughs> All right, I just said that for the, for the next 18 verses, we got Mama Kristen coming in clutch. For the next 18 verses, David listed all the benefits of following God. Listed all these benefits. Now, it makes me think of uh, when I was at Universal, my in-laws, they uh, surprised us at Universal with the Fast Pass Express, which gets you to the front of the line for every ride, except for one, every ride in Universal. The, did you know your pastor is a baller? <laughs> I like rub shoulders with The Rock and Vin Diesel. I mean, I, this is a, this thing, the benefits of this are amazing. And the lines the day that we were there, some of them were an hour and a half long. I mean, hundreds of people, miles of people. And we just would walk up and show our pass and we'd be like, sorry, man. Would you forgive me? <laughs> what, what's that? Your clothes are going out of style. You've been here so long. I wouldn't know about that because I'm going to go ride my ride right now. Some of you are like, must be nice. Listen, it's nicer than you might ever experience. Okay, it's so nice. 
But every time I would go in the bathroom at Universal, I would look at this lanyard and I would be like, this is real. Like the Vin Diesel, he ain't real. He's a hologram. This and its benefits are real. And, and some of you, you need to go home today and be like, Jesus, your love for me is real. Your grace for me, it's real. Your forgiveness for me, it's real. Your patience with me, it's real. And my hoopty car that I don't really even like that much, it's a real car. And my job I don't love that much, it's real. Everything that you've given me is real. If you're breathing right now, God has got good things in your life. Isn't that true? And so I got two things I want you to do for homework this week. And we'll put these on the screen, okay? Because all you got to do. Number one, tell yourself all the good things Jesus has filled your life with. Every single day, just remind yourself of all these good things Jesus has done in your life. And the second thing is a little different. Would you invite somebody to Easter at Bayshore so they can hear the good news of Jesus? I mean, come on, I want to, I want to, our executive pastor's in the room, but I want to break some fire code violations up in here on Easter. You need to bring the whole neighborhood, you know, get, get everybody in your, let the whole neighborhood in your van and be like, hey, welcome to Fast and Furious the Ride. We're going to church because we got good news to share. So today I want to end by us singing about how God has been so good to us. And you may not feel this right now, but I want you to feel and experience these words. And so I want everybody to stand up on your feet. I'm going to pray for you. And then we're going to sing these words. Jesus, I'm so thankful that even if things are bad in our life right now, even if things are going sideways, we have good news because we have you. And the benefits of following you, they're real. They're tangible. They're you. So God, I just pray that we'll keep the good news good. And, and if we need some perspective shift, I pray that this song will do that for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.